Okay. What times are changing now, 800 to 500 BCE? Uh, the Lyric Age, again, this is colonization. Uh, one of those things is, uh, let me just come all the way down here on this one. Okay. It's over here in Ionia, okay, Asia Minor, or today modern-day Turkey. Uh, unfortunately for the Greeks, the city-states get this idea of becoming independent, something we as Americans and former colonies of England know a lot about. Okay. It relieves but doesn't end our political crisis back home in terms of our population of the haves versus have-nots. It does, however, spread Greek people and knowledge throughout the Mediterranean, not just Ionia, down to North Africa, uh, into parts of the Middle East, into Italy, all the way over to France and even Spain, all have colonies of the Greeks. Okay? This promotes trade and it brings Greeks into contact with older civilizations. Uh, including the Persians, and we're going to see that's going to be a problem because the Persians don't like them coming over here and encroaching on what they see as their empire. Okay, here's where a big change in society comes about. Okay, these influences of these older civilizations virtually change every aspect of Greek, Greek, Greek life. We're going to see, first of all, the rise of tyrants, these guys who come to power uh, during a time of turmoil and, and rule. Okay. We're going to see an influence uh, and the foreign uh, influence that undermines the aristocrats. Uh, we're going to see the development of a merchant class. We're going to find merchants who are trading in these colonies and other places around the Mediterranean. They become wealthy. How come that guy who's an aristocrat's better than me just because he had some land? I've now got more money than him. But a big important thing is this thing right here. This is the hoplite phalanx. Look at this guy. It's, it's a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder wall of shields and armor and these big, huge, up to 20-foot-long spears. Nothing I want to charge into. Okay. The big thing about this is uh, the revolution leads to tyrants coming in to uh, deal with these city-states that are fighting each other early on. Um, it's a sort of piecemeal process. It doesn't happen Everywhere all over the city states of Greece, it might happen here, and then you know several years later in some other city state. It's a chaotic time period. Remember, when you're fighting like this and having chaos, that's bad for trade, bad for civilization in general. Moving along, the tyrants become replaced by democracies. We're going to define that as citizenship based on land ownership. So even if you have a lot of land, you've got more uh, rights as a citizen, a little bit of land to have any kind of citizenship. Okay. That will change a little bit later, but it's the conclusion. It's this is a time period, this lyric age of tremendous change, and ideas of individualism will develop. And part of that is because as the hoplite phalanx comes along, and those guys standing shoulder to shoulder fighting, what happens is there the cavalry is less important, and so those guys say we want rights, and so we got to define how we define what is a citizen. Okay. A lot of you guys ask about the Greek gods here, and we'll talk about those a little bit more in class. But these great gods had an area of strength, but they often had human characteristics and human failings. Mr. Pulley, they did whatever they wanted to do. They didn't seem very like good role models at all. Well, they're not role models, okay? This is mythology, but we got to realize we call it a myth. This is what most of them actually believed, okay? Because the gods have explained how life came to be the way it is, and how we came to be the way we are. Why are we flawed? Just look at our gods. They're terrible. Okay, here we go. Um, the development of the city-states, the polis, okay? The polis, again, this is this uh, city-state, the city, often on a hill, which is the Acropolis, and the surrounding fields, the fields because that's what's going to feed us. Uh, realize that not everyone lives inside the wall of the city, but in case of attack, we all come in to the city, okay? From that word polis, we get things like police and politics that we use in modern society. And the Acropolis, this is the uh, fortified part of the polis on top of that hill. Again, this is the wall you have to kind of charge up to. Look how steep that is. Guys up there throwing things at you as you're trying to attack. Not a good situation to have to be in if I'm trying to attack that. That's the idea. Okay. There's also up uh, in this area, as you get up there, the Agora or the marketplace of the polis. Uh, this is where um, meetings are held there as opposed, to not, as opposed to simply being a market where things are sold or, and or traded. Still going, on, <clears throat> still going on with the development of the city-states. Uh, again, we're talking about this colony, and we're defining that as an area, okay, and another part of the Mediterranean, but it is tied to the polis. Uh, we settle someplace else, but we're still part of that original polis or city-state.
Okay. Again, they sent back grains. It's a way for Polos to deal with increases in population following the end of the Dark Ages and, and the rise of population and the subsequent lack of food for everybody. Okay. But you got to realize, whenever we increase food production, okay, we're going to also increase our population. Okay. Our colonies uh, trade in contact with other civilizations, and they adopt the idea of coins from the Lydians, alphabet from the Phoenicians. Uh, this is that idea of cultural diffusion, adopting ideas from other places. Okay, Our warrior kings began to lose power to the wealthy landowners. That's that uh, aristocrats, the aristocracy develops. Um, they provided the cavalry, but as we said, with that hoplite, fa hoplite phalanx and changes from there, that's going to be a change. And here they are again. Look at this massive situation. They can also lift those back up and turn if they needed to, not instantaneously, but fast enough for any kind of attack. Okay. Again, this allows our farmers, our foot soldiers, to become more important, so they demand more rights. And middle-class merchants who did extremely well but didn't necessarily have land wanted more rights as well. Okay. This unrest was what led to that development of one man seizing power to settle things down so trade gets restored, and we call that a tyrant. Okay. Some rule unjustly, and that's where we get our current word, tyranny, and now we refer to someone who rules unjustly as being a tyrant, they use that word to define a guy who sees power to bring order, which actually doesn't sound very unjust. Okay, the tyrants ruled about 500 BCE. Most city-states become an oligarchy where a few wealthy people hold power or a democracy where power lies in the hands of all citizens. Okay, uh, oligarchies, um, places like Sparta, which will actually slide back to being a monarchy with a dual monarch, uh, or democracy, the prime example of that being Athens. Okay, citizens took part uh, in the government. Okay, and land ownership required. That, again, that rule will change a little bit later on. Okay, voting is usually done in the Agora. Uh, that's up in that area. You see uh, below that broken piece of pottery, uh, that sort of open place. They're climbing up there to do that. Uh, names were scratched on a piece of pottery, an ostracon, uh, and this is the person who chose. In this case, what we're voting on is you guys get in, in Athens anyway, for uh, serving in the government by a lottery system. Every person in society was expected to be able to serve, okay? every citizen. And if you thought you were doing, we thought you were doing badly, we could vote you out or ostracize you. Okay, the ostracon becomes to ostracize. Okay, ostracization. That's what we're talking about. Okay, that's where we're going to stop. I'm going to start with a second video a little bit later on, the tale of two Greek cities as opposed to Dickens, the tale of two other cities. Ask your English teacher. Okay. At any rate, the two cities we're going to look at, we've talked about a little bit already in class. That's going to be Athens and Sparta. We'll see you then.